You know him as the international mogul who redefined the big box retail industry. You know him as the largest employer in the world. But do you know who Sam Walton was before he was a billionaire? For Valuetainment Media, I'm Gerard Heron, and this is Before They Were Billionaires. Samuel Moore Walton was born on March 29, 1918 in Kingfisher, Oklahoma to Thomas Gibson Walton and Nancy Lee. He had one younger brother, James, and his father was a farmer who later entered into farm mortgaging as the Dust Bowl took over and farmland dried up. Though the family moved frequently during Sam's early childhood, he was still a good student and became the youngest Eagle Scout in Missouri's history while studying the 8th grade in Shelbina, Missouri. Though the Walton family finally settled in Columbia, Missouri, the Great Depression took hold and Sam was forced to take up numerous small jobs in order to help his family make ends meet. Among other chores, he sold magazine subscriptions and delivered newspapers. He milked the family cow, bottled surplus, and sold it to customers. He was the original Amazon dropshipper, you could say. Hi, I'm Matt, co-founder of the Amazing Selling Machine program that has taught and mentored thousands of students on how to run a successful business selling on Amazon. Like that, only like way less scammy. He attended David H. Hickman High School in Columbia where he was voted most versatile boy at the time of his graduation in 1936. After graduation, he went on to the University of Missouri as an ROTC cadet. He also joined the Zeta Phi chapter of the Beta Theta Pi fraternity and served as president of Burrow Bible Class, a large class of students from the University of Missouri and Stephen College. During his university days, he became a member of the QEBH, the well-known secret society on campus. He graduated in 1940 with a bachelor's degree in economics, and within days of graduation, Walton joined J.C. Penney as a management trainee in Des Moines, Iowa. He resigned from the job in 1942 in order to serve his country in World War II. Walton joined the U.S. Army Intelligence Corps and supervised security at aircraft plants and prisoner of war camps. He eventually reached the rank of captain. Once the war was over, Walton returned home, now married, and borrowed some money from his father-in-law to purchase a Ben Franklin variety store in Newport, Arkansas. The store was a franchise of the Butler Brothers chain. He found considerable success in retail management with his pioneering concepts. By the early 1960s, Walton, along with his brother James, owned 15 Ben Franklin franchises and one independent store. Walton now planned to open bigger stores in rural areas with discounted prices in order to attract more customers and achieve a higher sales volume. However, the Ben Franklin executives were not in favor of this concept and turned down the plan. Undaunted, Sam Walton went on to open the first Walmart store July 2nd, 1962 in Rogers, Arkansas. It was around this time the Walton brothers teamed up with Stefan Dasbach whom they collaborated with in order to grow their business. Keeping the price of products low was one of the major driving forces behind the successes of Walmart stores. Walton focused his efforts on sourcing products from American manufacturers who could supply merchandise for the entire Walmart chain at very low prices in order to meet the foreign competition. Over the next few years, Walmart stores sprung up all over the nation and by 1967, the Walton family owned 24 stores, registering up to 12.7 million in sales. Within a couple years of Walton officially incorporating his company as Walmart Stores Incorporated. The company went public in 1970 and the first stock was sold at $16.50 a share. By 1972, Walmart was listed on the New York Stock Exchange and by 1980, the company had reached $1 billion in annual sales, making Sam Walton officially a billionaire. Ever the innovator, Sam Walton launched the first Sam's Club in the 1980s to serve small businesses and individuals. During the same decade, the first Walmart Supercenter was also open, combining a supermarket with general merchandise to provide one-stop shopping convenience. Walmart enjoyed continued success throughout the years to come. By the early 1990s, the company's market share had surged past $45 billion. Walmart became the nation's largest retailer in 1991, surpassing even Sears, Roebuck & Company. Walton stepped down as CEO in 1988, but remained active in the company until his death from cancer in 1992. Today, Walmart has 11,000 stores in 28 countries and is the largest company by revenue in the world, as well as the largest private employer in the world. From 1982 to 1988, Forbes magazine named Walton the wealthiest man in the United States. And in 1992, Sam Walton was awarded the President Medal of Freedom, the honor of the nation's highest civilian honor by President George H.W. Bush. As if that's not enough, another way to measure Sam Walton's success is that after his death, his four children divided up his empire and all four of them are on the Forbes 100 list today as the 100 richest people in the world. That's how they 
became billionaires. Since you enjoyed this look into the life of a self-made billionaire, you will absolutely love this interview Patrick Bed David did with another self-made billionaire and a retail giant and Chip Wilson, the founder of Lululemon. And you can find all the rest of the Before They Were Billionaires here in the playlist. For Valuetainment Media, I'm Gerard Heron, and I will see you next week.